Hello, I'm Bert Hamner, the president of WindBase Offshore, and I'm going to be presenting about wind, water, and waves, the Titan Offshore platform for integrated ocean energy and freshwater production. I want to thank the Business Network for Offshore Wind, based in Baltimore, for helping us get this online. Here's the agenda. First, I'll describe some information about mobile jackup platforms for offshore work and then show how the Titan platform, an adaptation of that, is suitable for meteorology towers and wind turbines. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the use of MET towers for wind farms and why they're so important and why this is such a good solution. Then we'll turn to fresh water production, which we can also do with these Titan platforms, and how the Gulf of Mexico project now underway will be the first demonstration of producing fresh water offshore from wind power. We'll talk about new ways to make money with these platforms and where it can be done around the world. We do not have a question and answer session now with this presentation as this is a re-recording, but we welcome your questions and email will be presented at the end of the show. Mobile jackup platforms are one of the most established types of offshore construction. They stand on the seabed in up to 600 feet of water, and because the legs are independent, it can adjust to variable terrain, which means you don't have to scrape the seabed flat to install it. They're assembled on shore with everything on, on board, and then they're floated out to the site where the legs are lowered to the seabed and the system jacks itself up on the legs. And to get back to shore, you reverse the process. So it has almost no environmental impact out to at sea, it also is low risk for the site. If you don't like the site, you can move. And here you see on the lower left and upper right two drilling platforms for offshore. And then in the lower right, you see a offshore construction vessel with jack-up legs used to install wind turbines in the sea. Now this is a very important picture because those turbines you see there with their yellow foundations are sitting on what's called a monopole. Monopoles are simply giant single poles driven into the seabed, hammered into place or otherwise excavated into place. And they're not suitable for water deeper than about 100 feet because they start to develop terrible vibration problems at the top of them, as you can imagine. So an alternative to monopoles is necessary for water deeper than 100 feet. The Titan Mobile Jackup platform is that solution for wind turbines and meteorology towers. So we have here a three-legged platform specifically designed for this purpose. It's rated to hold a turbine up to megawatts in capacity from 100 to 280 feet of depth. It's rated to withstand a Category 5 storm, and this is rated by the American Bureau of Shipping, Standard Offshore Construction Certification. It takes about three days to get it from the shore until fully up and running and working. And no offshore ship is needed, and that's really important because in the United States, we do not have the ships that are now used in Europe to install offshore wind turbines. Nothing here can be used. Therefore, that's a real impediment to working in the United States, but we don't need ships. This works its own way. And it's already been built by a company in Sweden and they have installed it off of the ocean in Sweden as a meteorology tower. I'll let you just watch this for a second. The company that built it did it to the design of offshore wind power systems of Texas who I represent and I'm working with. The system has been towed out to sea and is standing out there now collecting meteorology data. The Met Tower solution on the machine is a 400 foot tall guideline meteorology tower. All wind farms need a tower like this to collect a year of data so that they can submit that to the insurance companies to show that, yes, there's enough energy there to make money. Now, putting these things into deep water and making them one-off solutions is expensive. Right now, those MET towers can cost $10 million, and then the foundation is scrapped. Now, a new Titan tower costs about $10.5 million and can be used in new sites, and you can move it to 200 miles to a new site. 
uh, seven days for seventy thousand dollars now with a titan we can collect data for a year and we can lease the entire system to the customer for five million dollars a year so doing three sites in three years costs 15 million not 30 million so this is quite appropriate for syndicated projects and coordinated regional development and of course without this wind data nothing will be done let me now show you how the Titan is assembled and from construction all the way to installation. As I said, what we have is a three arm system that is a hull. This is a complete watertight hull, which is assembled on shore, then loaded onto a barge and then submerged. And you'll see how it comes out of the water here. These are submersible barges that are commonly used, this is not anything new, that can then deliver these uh, foundations around the world. Here you see 10 of them being delivered at one time to a port where they'll be assembled and finally commissioned. A turbine is installed on top, the legs are kept in the upright position, of course, and then it's towed out to the site. Once at the site, the legs of the device are lowered to the seabed where as I said earlier the seabed can have variable terrain and there's no need to drill or blast or hammer and make noises and cause environmental impacts to the seabed. Once the legs are firmly installed the system jacks itself right up on its own legs to a height of 65 feet above the sea and within a day it's ready to turn on and get to work. It can be equipped with a variety of other types of equipment as we'll go into, but it's big enough to support a real crew. It's stable for 30 years in any environment. As I said, they're rated by the American Bureau of Shipping in order to have insurance. So how does this technology affect the cost of a wind farm? So here we have elements of a wind farm cost and how the Titan affects them. On the left hand column we see elements that substantially contribute to the level cost of energy from the turbine all the way to the finance cost itself. And how much they contribute in the center to the total cost and then what happens if you use the, the Titan system. I want to highlight two very, very important numbers. Uh, they're both circled. Uh, the 50 and 60% reductions from insurance and surety bonds. What that tells us is that this is the low risk solution because we don't have to pay as much in insurance. The underwriters understand that this is the best way to do the project. So although the Titan may not contribute double digit percentages to overall cost of a project, it substantially reduces the risk and therefore increases the feasibility of getting financing. So what would a Titan wind farm look like? Well, it will look just like all the other wind farms proposed. In other words, you won't be able to see them hardly at all. Most of the wind farms proposed on the Atlantic coast of the United States now are located from 10 to 15 miles offshore. And in this picture, you can see on the right side that at 15 miles, these things are nearly invisible. If they're two miles offshore, we've doctored this photo a little bit to show a, what a potential foundation on the, of the Titan would look like. But as you can see, it does not have a significant effect on the view if you get a view at all. Now let me turn to the Gulf of Mexico project where this is all coming to life in a very interesting way. So the project is established off of the coast of Texas at Galveston where there is a huge continental shelf and where the state of Texas unusually has a 10 mile state waters limit within which the state does all the permitting and the federal government does very little. That's important because Texas can often do things that others can't do. And that's why this project is happening there. In 2005, the Texas Land Commission issued the first ever USA offshore wind lease near Galveston. So this was done way before Cape Wind was even close to having uh, real progress in permitting. It was for a, it's for a single proof of concept Titan base unit within state waters, which is the predecessor for a commercial scale project comprising five Titans and 20 megawatts of generation capacity 
with seawater processing equipment that produces up to 30 million gallons of fresh finished water per day. So what this produces is three to five megawatts per machine, 30 million gallons a day of water from the whole project and 35 million gallons a day of a concentrated enriched brine, which we thought was a waste, but is not. And this will start in 2016, late next year, and then it's possible to do additional sites along the Texas coast. What we realize is that in Texas and in many places, the cost of fresh water has become very high and there's great conflict for it. We can put water makers into the hull of the Titan and use wind energy to make fresh water from seawater using reverse osmosis. So up to six million gallons per platform per day and it doesn't use even all the energy we're, make, we're using. So we can sell energy and produce water and sell the water. And by the way, this is the same type of reverse osmosis technology now used on hundreds of offshore rigs. That's how they get fresh water for the workers to drink and bathe and cook. So this is also a great solution, of course, for islands and coastal communities or anywhere along a coastline where infrastructures have been knocked out because this can be delivered by ship within uh, a relatively short time compared to rebuilding, for example, water and electric in installations. So the low cost, self-sufficient fresh water system is based on six reverse osmosis units inside the hull, completely protected from the elements, a power source, which is a wind turbine, a full-size control room, and also room, of course, on the deck for residents, and a full complete system for producing fresh water and delivering it to shore. Again, using off-the-shelf technology. What was bit exciting to learn is that brine waste from reverse osmosis caused by pushing the salt water against this filter turns out to be worth money. So concentrated brine is now a market in the areas of chlor alkali production where it's a feedstock for making chlorine by electrolysis. It's used in fracking injected into wells to displace gas and then in a wide variety of other industries uh, including a new one de-icing of roads and also now mining for minerals particularly lithium and even silver and gold. And in developed regions of the world where there are a lot of industries, probably all the brine can be sold as an additional revenue stream. This is a multi-billion dollar industry growing quickly. So what we have is a system that produces three streams of revenue, not one. It's not just electricity, it's water and brine. So taking a look at the numbers here, and I do want to emphasize these are estimates, and so please don't quote them in uh, anyway without contacting us first to get the latest information please. But we have all of the uh, equipment and financing in place and we have contracts for merchant market electricity at $20 a megawatt hour. We've got contract life for 20 years for both the power and the brine and the water and expect an internal rate of return on the project of much better than 20%. And there's other ways to make money with a Titan platform in the ocean because it can be the hub for other revenue streams. Of course, with a platform there, you have a place to do support and administration and housing. And that can make it possible to supervise wave and tidal power installations. In the upper left here, you see the CETO system from Carnegie Wave Power in Australia, which is the first functioning wave energy project in the water right now making electricity in fact, to also make fresh water on shore from reverse osmosis. And in the lower right is the Alstom huge tidal turbine installed in Scotland. Aquaculture is another industry that can be based around a Titan platform so that fish can be grown and sold to generate. So where could this work? Well, the criteria should be first about sustainability, and I'll tell you why. Low carbon, scalable, and urban is critical because that's where the demand for this type of solution is coming from. Then there are physical siting criteria, wind and wave energy, markets for water and power and brine, the bathymetry, uh, the local infrastructure, ports, uh, grid, etc. 
And then policy frameworks have to be considered. Uh, what are the water and energy utility systems doing for the future? And then industrial development, this is going to stimulate port development, environmental protection, and coastal zone management are all issues that have to be considered. And therefore, we find sites like this are in places like this. So um, the west coast of the United States around San Francisco has a fantastic resource for supplying San Francisco with clean energy and fresh water. And the coast of California is suitable in many places for this. Then southern Africa and South America have strong wind resources as does Australia and the west coasts of southern Europe and the UK. The tip of Italy and the Strait of Messina and the west coast of India also have good sites. Many small islands could benefit from this, but it's difficult to tell whether they actually are feasible as they don't have much infrastructure. Uh, and then some places like Hawaii really need it desperately as well. The reason that low carbon, scalable, and urban is such a focus of this uh, criteria is that there are very large financial organizations looking to fund this kind of solution. The P80 group is means 80 giant pension funds, all organized to accelerate investment from pension fund money into clean technologies that have a climate impact. And they've gotten organized through the Global Solution Summit. The chairman is Prince Charles. Uh, they are partnered with the Global Clean Tech Cluster Association that is uh, that represents over 10,000 clean technology companies, and together they're trying to get this technology deployed out there. So the Titan is a great example of the type of technology that these groups are excited about, and the World Bank uh, and others are leading uh, a variety of initiatives to make this something that turns into public-private partnerships and mobilizes a lot of capital. Which leads to the question, how many other ways can you make money with these things? Well, we've got wind data and wind power and there's habitats and minerals and brine and fresh water and wave energy and aquaculture and tidal power and could be more. You should let us know what you think. In our near future, we'll be networking with anybody who's interested and my email below will let you get in touch. We'll be uh, we planned to have a World Bank presentation July 7 to 8, but that has been postponed to September to allow uh, Washington, D.C. people to stop having vacations. We'll be working on financing of the Gulf Project and getting those final documents in place, and there are opportunities for outside investors if people are interested. We'll be assessing the meteorology tower needs and the potential partnerships on the USA Atlantic coast. There are 12 projects proposed along that region and all of them need MET data. And we can provide that at a substantially lower cost than they can do by themselves. We're going to be doing a brine markets assessment to learn what other ways we can find to sell this particular uh, byproduct that used to be a waste and we'll be looking at related technology, aquaculture and wave energy in particular. That'll help us identify global sites and we're excited about talking to international partners who can get in touch anytime. I want to say thanks to the Business Network for Offshore Wind for encouraging us to put together this presentation and I hope anybody that's interested will follow up.